Hi YouTube, um, this is a video response to um, a guy called Graphic Transfer who's been doing some uh, videos about etching knife blades. Uh, I mentioned electrolytic etching to him and he asked if I had any videos of the process so I, I, I thought I'd make a very very brief one and post it. Uh, you'll have to excuse the brevity of this video but I'm extremely busy today so uh, I'm just going to do it very quickly. This is my uh, power supply. It's actually a modified ATX power supply from a computer. Um, but you can use pretty much any power supply I think. Um, some people even use 9 volt batteries. Um, but any like uh, power supply like a modified wall wart or something. I've got this plugged into the, the 12 volt rail on my power supply. I haven't actually labelled it yet. I've only just finished making it. Um, but I think anything from from about 5 to 12 volts should work and it draws about an amp I think so uh, that's the power supply now I've got a big uh, jug of salt water here this is the uh, the electrolyte for the process um, it's just plain tap water and I dumped a load of salt into it and now connected to the uh, cathode the negative lead on my power supply I've got a just a stainless steel bolt it doesn't really matter what this is made out of because the uh, the cathode doesn't get particularly damaged by this process it's not a, a sacrificial cathode um, so I'm just you, you can just use pretty much any old chunk of metal um, you can vary the size of the cathode depending on what you you're etching um, it helps to have roughly the same surface area of the cathode to the surface area of the um, the piece you're etching but it doesn't really seem to matter this is a very inexact process um, as long as you get the basic setup right it should work okay and onto the anode um, it's uh, it's actually uh, a crappy knife I bought from a dollar store just to uh, practice on and as you can see I've wrapped it in uh, black electrical tape and I've just I've cut some just random holes in it to simulate the animal footprint designs that you've been etching and um, this is um, connected to the anode or positive lead of the power supply and the anode obviously has to be connected to a, an area of bare metal we won't be dipping that into the solution or else that will get etched too so we'll be holding it in the solution so just this part's covered here Okay, so without further ado, let's turn on the power supply and start etching. Now, as I dip this into the salt solution, you should see some uh, bubbles starting to rise from the, the negative lead. So let's dip it in. And I don't know if you can see that, but immediately that negative uh, electrode, the cathode, is... Uh, bubbling furiously <coughs> so uh, we've got our anode in there everything we don't want etched away is masked off or not dipped in the solution and uh, what I'm going to do now is stop the camera while this etches because it takes a few minutes and then we'll see what we've got okay okay I'm back alright as you can see the water, the salt water, has gone a pretty horrible murky greenish brown colour and it's, it's got some like precipitate floating around in it. Um, and the knife blade, uh, first of all, there's, there are a couple of flaws here where I, um, I, I didn't apply the mask very carefully, I just wrapped some tape around it and cut some random shapes out with a knife. Uh, the tape didn't stick properly around this hole. I think I slipped with the knife into the into the hole because I forgot it was there when I was making the mask. So uh, you can see how important it is to mask the area off properly. Um, and some of the edges might look a bit jagged, but that was just the way I cut them with the knife. If you use a good quality stencil, you get good quality results. Uh, I believe. Um, Places like Kinkos and stuff, they can they can make vinyl stencils from a, a computer printout, um, and you can also use nail polish or presumably like pretty much any kind of, of paint and paint the area, and then use a scribe or something to trace out your pattern. So you can get quite intricate patterns 
by hand if you, if you do that but I, I haven't got the artistic qualities for that but, um, as you can see I mean it looks a bit looking at it on the camera now this area here looks very light and that looks very dark but in real life they're actually the same color nearly and the depth is even I just gave it a quick wire brush I suppose if I went over it a bit better it'd look a bit more spectacular it's hard to tell the depth on this but I mean I can catch it with my nail um, I'd say um, if, if you look at the, the thickness of this knife blade it's very thin um, so I was actually worried about etching all the way through it so I could have left it a little bit longer um, say it was a, a thicker knife blade you could probably get a depth of well as long as you can get the uh, the stencil to stick you can go as deep as you like just leave it in the solution longer <coughs> uh, but I didn't want to etch all the way through the knife blade on this so I, I didn't I didn't go that far but yeah you can definitely see um, there's some uh, you can, actually on this part here you can see where I slipped with the knife when I was cutting the stencil so you do have to be extremely careful about the the stencil um, but if you get a good stencil it's pretty much a foolproof process I don't know if you can see the depth there and uh, this this surface here it's like a a rough texture, <clears throat> probably like a like a sandpapery texture where the the metal's been etched. So, if you like that, you could keep it. It, it is quite a, a cool texture if you're trying to get a good contrast on the piece. Also, you can use an AC supply. Th this this supplies direct current or DC. Uh, but if you want, you can use uh, you can switch over to AC. My power supply is not capable of it. But if you switch over to alternating current after the etch is done this surface will turn black because it basically strips and then replates material very very fast uh, so that'll give you a, a very dark surface with the etch to give you a nice high contrast you can't really the, the colors not very good on this video but this is more of a like a, a battleship gray type color but, I mean it still gives a reasonable contrast or if you didn't want that you could polish it sand it and stuff and that would just give you a nice defined edge around it so there you go um, you can uh, you can do etching that's photo accurate on this you, you can use um, there's some techniques if you do a search for PCB etching like printed circuit board etching you'll see that some people use a uh, laser printer and toner to make a, uh, a stencil and you can actually get extremely fine detail on it although you would have to be careful about the etching then because the transfers come off a bit easier but there you go sorry about the brevity of the video and I've kind of skimmed through everything here but uh, that gives you a rough idea Google is your friend do, do a search and you'll find loads of tutorials and stuff okay thanks for watching bye